Okay. All right. Hello and welcome to the Information Technology Career Choice Virtual Panel Discussion. Today, you're going to be hearing from professionals in the field and have an opportunity to ask them some questions. We hope these discussions will give you insight into the IT field and help you make informed choices about the careers you're thinking about pursuing and the pathways you should consider to get there. Before we begin, I'm going to share a few webinar tips with you. Um, if you'd like to interact with the panelists and the moderator, you can submit a question through the Q&A feature. Uh, and that's found in the controls at the bottom of your screen. So if you're not seeing anything right now, take your mouse or just hover over the bottom and you should see that Q&A um, logo there in the middle. You can submit a question anonymously um, to the moderator. Um, if you'd like to include your first name, um, we'll give you a shout out when we ask your question. Um, you do not have the ability to interact with other attendees um, through the Zoom webinar feature. Um, we've disabled the chat, so only our staff members can see your questions. And again, we'll be um, forwarding those on to the moderator. And at any time, if you need technical assistance, you can call our help desk. That number is 434-766-6772. Again, that number is 434 434- 766-6772. And now without any, any further delay, it is my sincere pleasure um, to welcome today's moderator for the panel, Anthony Petorek um, with Microsoft. So Anthony, take it away. Thank you and welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you here. We're glad you chose this panel. And we're going to be talking to uh, a number of professionals in the IT field. I'm gonna briefly introduce uh, each one and then we'll give them a moment or two to talk about uh, what they do, the company they're with, their mission, what their job role is. So here's the makeup of our panel. We have uh, Kristen Puglio from Microsoft. We have Inez Roddenberg from the city of Danville. We have Kelly Shotwell from the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. And we have Chase Weddle from the Mid-Atlantic Broadband Communities Corporation. We're excited to have all of them. They're professionals in the IT field. And I think you're gonna really enjoy what they have to say. And you're gonna learn a lot about what this field has to offer for you. So let me turn it over to our panelists and we'll let them one at a time tell you a little bit about what they do in their company. And let's start with uh, Kristen. Okay, hello. Um, I'm Kristen Puglio, and I am a data center technician at Microsoft. Um, I'm sure all of you have heard of Microsoft and know that they develop stuff like uh, Windows operating system and Office and Internet Explorer and Xbox and all that. But what you may not know is that Microsoft also helps make up the cloud. So like when you save your photos to the cloud or save documents to OneDrive and things like that, you know, where does that data go? You know, what, what is the cloud? Um, so basically the cloud is like a, a global network of servers all operating together to um, perform different functions like, like, save, like save photos, you know, probably an embarrassing photo of you that your mom has that she never wants to lose. So she saves it to OneDrive. Um, and you know you can thank the cloud for that because that baby's not going anywhere. She's always going to have access to it. Um, so anyway, these uh, these servers, which are kind of like computers, uh, but a little bit different. They and all of the cables that are used to connect them to the outside world are housed in these huge buildings called data centers. And sometimes these servers uh, have a part that goes bad or a connection that goes down or whatever, and, and that's where I come in. So as a data center technician, it is my job to fix the server when it's not working properly. And the, the cool part about that is I get to take it all apart and put it all back together as many times as I need to to get it up and running again. Um, and I have a lot of fun doing it. So, so yeah, that's me and what I do as a data center technician. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, let's talk to Inez. Uh, good morning. Um, this is Inez Rodenberg. I'm the Chief Information Officer for the City of Danville. 
So I manage 25 uh, IT professionals and we have 1300 employees that work with the city of Danville. And our goal really is to serve the public. Uh, we pro provide applications, development, application solutions. We support GIS. We provide networking, security, Wi-Fi. We provide support for public safety, fire, sheriff's office, police department. And then we, we handle all the core applications, finance, uh, utility billing for all the different departments. Been working for the city for 23 years and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I love serving the public. Um, thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. And Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly Shotwell. I'm the director of the IT Academy at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center in South Boston. Uh, the mission of the Higher Ed Center is to advance Southern Virginia's economic potential through education, innovation, and collaboration. So the way we do that is we offer a wide variety of educational opportunities, and then we help connect employers to talented job seekers in the area. So when people earn degrees and certifications, they gain the skills and they gain the confidence that helps them to land a really good, high paying and satisfying job. Well, then they have the money to pay for things that they need and want, and this puts cash back into the local economy. What it also does is it creates a pool of skilled, um, a skilled workforce so that when businesses um, are looking to hire someone, there are, there are skilled people in the community that can join their business. This allows the business to prosper, and it also uh, makes our area attractive to other businesses. So all of these things contribute to a healthy um, and thriving economy in our region. So that's the purpose of the Higher Ed Center. One of the training opportunities, one of the training um, programs that we offer at the Higher Ed Center is the IT Academy. So um, I'm the director of the IT Academy and our goal is to provide instruction and hands-on training that leads to um, first industry recognized IT certifications and then hopefully these certifications also lead to entry-level jobs, primarily as IT technicians and data center technicians. Then we also offer more advanced courses for people who uh, just want to ramp up their skills and advance in their IT careers. So uh, that's a little about the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center and, and then specifically the IT Academy. So as the director of the IT Academy, my responsibilities um, are things like leading the strategic planning for the IT Academy. So that involves mapping out a plan for our future. And to do that, I may talk to someone like Anthony Petorek or, or other members of the, um, the business community in our region to find out you know, what kind of skills are they looking for because we wanna provide the skills in our training classes that are what is needed by the employers out there. So that, that's one of the things that is a key part of my job. Um, I work with partners such as other educational institutions, local employers, uh, and just other business and community partners. I uh, lead my team in developing new course materials and hands-on lab activities. We're very, very big on, on hands-on learning. So uh, all of those labs have to be created and, and written up and tested and developed. So that, that's a big part of my job as well, managing the IT Academy staff, of course. And then there are a lot of administrative details that are required. If you're gonna put, put out a course, you've gotta have, you know, you've gotta schedule it, you gotta have the resources lined up or the materials, make sure you've got the equipment and supplies and materials. So that, that comes into my job too. When I started five years ago, um, six years ago, actually, I taught all the time. And that's one thing that I miss now because I don't get to do quite as much teaching. Um, we've hired some great instructors and our program has grown. And so there are uh, you know, a lot of other duties, things that I need to be taken care of. But every opportunity that I get, I still wanna go back into the classroom and um, work with the students on the labs and things. Uh, that's, that's a big point of enjoyment for me. Um, so I'm really excited to participate in today's panel and uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Kelly. And let's go to Chase. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chase Weddle. I'm the Senior Network Planner for Middle Lake Broadband Communities Corporation. Uh, we also go by NBC. Uh, we are housed in the Soba Innovation Hub here in South Boston, Virginia. 
Uh, and we own and operate about 2,000 miles of fiber optic network throughout the state of Virginia. Uh, most of our network is used to provide backhaul services or lit circuits uh, to places like the Microsoft Data Center, uh, to places within the city of Danville, um, and cell towers, uh, things of that nature. So essentially think of it as if you need the internet, we help provide that connection, uh, connectivity and connection back to uh, the hubs throughout the world uh, that allow you to get to Xbox Live um, you know, to have your internet to do YouTube, uh, all sorts of things. Um, and our main mission is to bridge the digital divide. So you hear a lot about certain areas are underserved. Um, we work to help uh, beef up the areas for business purposes and provide the services that uh, some other companies may not be able to. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization, um, but we continue to thrive uh, with uh, all sorts of grants and other funding opportunities to help provide services uh, throughout the state and uh, help drive business growth. Um, as I just mentioned, we're in the Sub Innovation Hub here in South Boston. This was a new building um, that was built and uh, we just moved in in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, we're looking at building some other buildings downtown and, and making those uh, opportunities continue to grow for Southern Virginia. Um, so just think of us as kind of the glue that helps get you from A to Z as far as your connectivity. Um, and, you know, we continue to work with, with Kelly uh, and their group. We actually had a few people that went through the IT Academy uh, that are employees here. Um, and we continue to try to grow our employees, but also grow the local areas. Uh, thank you, Chase. Uh, thank you, all of you, uh, for giving us a, a little overview of who you are, what you do. Uh, as you can see from this panel, uh, the opportunities, uh, the job assignments are so varied in IT. Uh, there's something for just about everybody, no matter what your interest is. Now for the next few minutes, we're actually going to ask some questions to our panelists, and we're gonna focus in on a few different areas. Uh, we're gonna start by uh, asking the panelists why they got into the field and what they enjoy about it. And we'll spend a few minutes talking about the skills and education needed to get into the IT field. We'll talk to our panelists a little bit about the benefits of being in the IT field and where it's going in the future. And then finally, we'll let each of them give you a little career advice. So let's start uh, by asking the panel, what initially drew you or interested you in the field? And if you want, you can just kind of physically raise your hand and let me know if you wanna comment on that question. I'll start with Kristen. Okay. Um, for me, what drew me to the field is the fact that it's so broad. Um, it covers so many different types of work. And so to me, that just means that there's a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of room for growth. And um, also it's ever changing. So, you know, the IT field's not going anywhere, which also means job security. And um, I, like the fact that I won't necessarily have to do the same thing every day. So that way I can never get bored in, in my work. You know, it doesn't become mundane, it's always exciting. So that's kind of what drew me to IT. Oh, very nice, thank you, excellent. Any others, what, okay. what piqued your interest? Okay, Inez. Um, so my uh, path was a little bit non-traditional. I started with GIS and planning. Um, so my focus through IT has been more on the global positioning systems, which has really become a key in information technology. And I look at myself as wearing two hats. So I'm very much involved with IT. I love the challenge. And as Kristen said, you know, every day is different. You know, you're never going to have the same day and we solve problems every day. I think especially through COVID, I think a lot of people realized how much IT is necessary because we were able to solve so many problems. But I also look at myself wearing a second hat and that's being in local government, that we get to serve the community, we get to improve their quality of life. And um, that really does mean a lot to me. Oh, very nice, thank you. But what do you all like about your job most? I mean, a couple of you have already mentioned that, you know, it's different every day and that's fantastic. Are there any other things that you really love about what you do? I'll say quickly, um, I love trying all the new toys. <laughs> We all love that. <laughs> yeah, you get first crack at new technology. Uh, Chase, I saw your hand. Yeah, I hope being able to uh, serve other communities that some people uh, may not be able to get to. Um, we, we try to work through different rural areas that uh, you, you see the impacts um, on a monthly basis. Uh, you know what 
uh, opportunities you're going to end up providing uh, certain areas that may may have not been able to get that um, and, and to be able to see the impacts and the growth that it has over time. Uh, Boynton being one of them, you know, we, we were able to watch Boynton grow and continue to grow uh, over the last 10 years. And, and it's amazing to see how far things are going to go in the future. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Kelly. You know, I was in, I started in IT a long time ago. I hate to say how long ago. I kind of grew up with it and starting in the 80s. And I was an IT practitioner at a public school system for 31 years and retired and came to the IT Academy. And then I became a, a trainer. And it is, although all that other work was satisfying in its own way, um, being a trainer and working with the, the students, and my students are adults, and they range anywhere from 19 years old to 60 years old, but it is so, so satisfying to have them go through our program and go to the job fair and do interviews. And then I get an email or they stop by and they've gotten a, they've gotten a dream job. They've gotten what they wanted. They're, they're excited. They're working for Microsoft now, or they're working for another employer. And, and that is so, so satisfying to know that you have helped someone um, reach a, a career goal and move off in a great direction. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. So I think one thing that we can see from all of these uh, responses is that if you enjoy people, if you like solving problems, if you want variety uh, in your day, then IT is a great opportunity to enjoy all of those things and more. Well, let's talk a little bit about the skills and education that's required to get into a field like this. Let me ask do you need a post-secondary degree or a four-year degree in order to be successful in IT? Uh, Kristen. Um, I'd have to say yes and no. I mean, it just depends on what area you go into. But I myself, I have a four-year degree, but my degree is um, in biological sciences. So it's not IT related. And I don't necessarily lean on that in my day-to-day -day job. What I think helps me the most is I actually went through the Data Center Academy in South Hill and got um, my A-plus certification. Um, so certifications, I think, play a, a, a role um, in getting a job. Even in a lot of jobs in IT, they're entry level. You don't necessarily need that four-year degree, and you can work your way up because it's the on-the-job training that um, you can lean on the most once you get in there, and that's how you kind of climb your way up to the top and start uh, progressing in your career. So my answer, I think, would be no, not necessarily do you need the four-year degree to uh, be successful in the field. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. And Kelly. I agree with Kristen, um, especially when you're talking about getting into that, getting that entry-level position. I think the certifications are very relevant because, um, you know, the, the degree some of the applicants have earned maybe pretty aged and, and um, not particularly relevant. My, my four-year degree is in anthropology, so I'm with you there, Kristen. Um, but I got, a, I got a programming degree after that because I wanted to get into IT. But um, I do think that um, it, depending on how you define success, if there probably is a level as you advance up in the organization where a four-year degree might become a requirement um, to move any further up in, in the um, the hierarchy. Okay, good. And, you know, for, for many, <clears throat> um, if you just want to get your foot in the door, as Kristen, as Kelly said, uh, getting a technical certification is a great way to start. Um, you know, I've been in this field for 30 years myself, over 30 years, and, and I consider myself to be successful in this business, and I don't have a college degree at all. I've got a bunch of certifications, and that's carried me through, and I think that's true for a, a lot of folks. Um, <clears throat> so, let me ask you this. Do you need to be a math wizard? Uh, is IT just all about computer programming? Is, is, that, is that what we're talking about here? Uh, Inez. Yeah, so I, no, I would say no. I think it depends on what interest that you want to go into. There's, IT's become so broad. I mean, we have folks that do marketing um, in IT. And then, of course, we have networking and, and security and programming and so forth. So I think the, the course of IT has become so broad that no, you don't have to be a math wizard. You don't have to be a programmer. Um, I think you can find your fit somewhere in IT based on what those things that you're interested in. 
I've got a couple individuals that work in client solutions and they simply build relationships with our partners and they work to solve problems. Um, so my answer would be no. Oh, very good. Thank you. So what are some of the core skills and training? If somebody wants to get into this field. What should they be looking to do then? Uh, let's start with Kelly. Well, um, I think, as I, and as I said, there's so many pathways once you start into IT. I think that they need to begin at the beginning and investigate what these different opportunities are in the IT field because there's a, it's a very different job path. You go, for example, into IT support versus uh, database administration or coding or, you know, or cloud support. These are, these are very different types of roles and they have different types of skill sets needed. So I think that I think that people that are interested in IT need to start at the beginning. Um, for example, um, we teach an IT fundamentals course that is geared towards um, introducing um, our students to those different pathways because you don't want to miss something that would have been really fascinating to you because you didn't know about it at the start and then you move too far along another path. So I think begin at the beginning and, and really do the research and maybe take some, some of an array of classes and, and see what you like first. Okay, good, thank you. And Kristen, I saw your hand. Did you still have a thought? Hey, yeah. Um, I just think that one of the most important things is just to have a drive and have you know a love for learning because, like I said, the IT field is always changing, so you're always going to be learning something new. Um, and also, soft skills play a role into it too. I think that those are very important. I feel like that's something that's kind of overlooked a lot of times and when you're in, you know, in school, I know that some, um, <clears throat> I think, I believe at the IT Academy, they have courses that um, help you develop those soft skills. And that, those are also really important when it comes to just working day to day, your day to day work environment and being able to interact with your team members and things like that. Or if you have a customer facing job that also helps you with um, dealing with, the cu with customers and things like that. So I think those skills are also really important to have. Yeah, very good. And, and, and that's an important thing. I'm glad you brought that up. And maybe not everybody that's on this, uh, listening to this right now knows what soft skills are. We're not talking about uh, skills with software. Uh, what, what are we talking about, panel? When we say soft skills, what are those qualities or skills that, that everybody needs to have if they're going to be in the IT field? Uh, Inez. Uh, communication is key, and I would say communication other than texting or email, having a face-to-face -face or a virtual face-to-face -face communication or conversation. Um, writing, I think, is extremely important. Um, it's amazing how many times I'll get a resume that just, you know, the grammar's off or, you know, the formatting is off. You know, that for me is extremely important. Um, to, to build relationships and know how to build those relationships and long-term relationships and so, um, listening skills. Um, you know, it, it, they're extremely important and they're things that I think are going to make the difference between, say, an entry-level position and higher up in management. I think if you, if you want long-term success and if you want to build that career, I would agree with Kristen that those soft skills are going to be critically important. Yeah, very true. And, and I can tell you from Microsoft's perspective, you know, when we interview people for technical jobs, we assume they have technical skills. We spend an awful lot of time figuring out if you have the soft skills. You know, are you dependable? Are you reliable? Can you get along well with others? Do you know how to solve problems? Uh, do you show up on time for work? All of those are, are vital skills, not just in IT, but for any job. Well, let me ask this question uh, specifically to Kelly, who's uh, with the IT Academy. What, what is the training program with the IT Academy like? What, what, what will students, what should they expect and what types of IT careers does it prepare them for? Well, as I mentioned, we, we're starting out with a, well, first of all, all of our courses right now are geared towards CompTIA certifications, which are uh, IT industry recognized, um, worldwide recognized certifications. So um, in our classes, we're, we're um, working our students towards achieving those certifications, and they do take the certification exams with every course. That's part of the course. But we start them off with IT Fundamentals Plus because that is the course that, that introduces 
a little bit of database, a little bit of scripting, a little bit of um, coding, a little bit of just IT hardware support, and gives a broad brush um, uh, intro to IT concepts. And then from there, um, we and we do move them. It's kind of like algebra one, then algebra two, and then algebra three. We move them forward in what we feel is the best progression uh, for their success. So the next level is a, a semester long A plus server plus class. A plus covers um, uh, supporting personal computing devices, which now that's laptops, PCs, tablets, phones, and then connecting them to the internet. And then you've got to ha um, have a little bit of uh, cyber security savvy because once you get on the internet, you're at risk. And, and so all of those um, topics are covered in A plus server plus. And the server plus half, for example, would be very appropriate to the job that Kristen has, uh, supporting those servers in a data center environment or a business environment. And I'm sure Danville, um, Danville City has um, an abundance of servers, both uh, physical and virtual servers. So um, those two are combined. And then we, the next level we take them to is the network class, network plus. And each of these result in um, certifications. And in our classes, they're about, uh, they're about half um, lecture and about half hands-on, particularly the A plus server plus. That has the most hands-on in the networking. Um, we have some cybersecurity, uh, security plus, Linux plus. So we, we're continually adding courses. And what we find is that students will, will you know, finish our A plus server plus and then uh, go out and get a job. We do soft skills and we do a job fair after that course. And then they often come back to us once they've become employed and, and take some of those higher level courses um, to expand their, their skills. But um, is, that, is that what you were looking for as far as yeah. what we got? Yeah. yeah, that's really good. And I'll tell you, if you've never been by to see the lab uh, there at the Higher Ed Center, uh, it's, it's impressive. There's a large mock data center lab there, probably one of the largest uh, we've ever seen. There's a, a, a wonderful technical workbench area. So yeah, truly a hands-on experience if you go there. And you know, the Higher Ed Center is not the only place where you can get uh, training opportunities in IT. Um, you know, the Southside Virginia Community College offers uh, programs as well. Uh, so there's a variety of things you can do locally if you're interested in IT training. Well, now let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits of being in this field and where it's headed. Um, for each of you, perhaps, what, what are some perks uh, or benefits uh, that people might not know about in, in the IT field that, that you appreciate or value? Uh, let's start with Kristen. I think uh, Inez also hit on it and Kelly about how you get to play with the toys first. Um, so like it, here at Microsoft, we can get into um, a group where you are uh, able to do beta testing on things before they're launched to the public. So you can get your hands on something first uh, before anybody else, which is really cool. And, you know, Microsoft is a software develop developer, so they come up with some really neat things. Um, and so I think that's one perk. And um, also something that's probably uh, unique here to just Boyd and the data center, we also have a ping pong table. So we get to play ping pong on our breaks. And so that's a lot of fun too. I like that perk. <laughs> yeah, very nice, thank you. And uh, Chase. So, so one of the perks that we've seen on our side for the IT uh, type work is some of the conferences we get to go to and the, the social uh, interactions we get to have. Now, that, that's been somewhat dampened by the pandemic here the last year, but uh, prior to that, uh, you know, traveling to conferences all over the place, uh, San Diego, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Miami, you, you name it. So you get to see different parts of the world and interact with different people from all over the world and get a different perspective on how different people handle certain situations, how they do different problem solving. Uh, so it really helps you to grow not only in the social network, but also from a professional standpoint. And typically the company that's sending you pays for it. So essentially you get to go to these places at no personal cost. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And I can say for myself, having uh, worked in this field, um, some of the perks I love is we often get to play with the latest and greatest technology that comes out. Uh, the very cool things that are being done in this industry, we get to look at 
and play with and test uh, first. And, and that's such a cool experience. Um, something else that's a great perk, uh, working for any company in IT, and, and you'll, you'll come to appreciate this as you get older, is some of the benefits that you get from the company. You know, health benefits, medical, vision, all of those things. That, that's a great, great perk that uh, you probably don't think about a lot now, but you will, trust me. Uh, so, and you'll find that with most companies and businesses. Now, let's ask a little bit about where this field is going. And I want to ask this to Chase first. Um, where do you see the uh, emerging and evolving technologies and IT heading? And, and what kind of jobs do you think we're going to be seeing over the next five to 10 years? So I think it's easy to see when you look at everything on TV, on, on the web, where stuff is going in this field. Um, everyone has heard of 5G. Uh, everyone has heard of the cloud. Um, it, it's all moving to a digital world. Um, whereas you used to keep things on your personal laptop or in a file drawer in your desk um, or in your office, now all that's becoming digitized. Uh, think about your phones. Um, we used to carry around uh, cameras and video cameras and uh, bag phones for those that can remember those. Um, nowadays, everything you have is in the palm of your hand. Uh, you've got a camera, video camera. Um, you can video chat with your family from across the world. Um, so I, I think we're definitely moving to a digital world, and that digital world definitely requires uh, the IT backhaul and IT support. Um, and, and that's where, you know, Kelly and, and her group comes in and all the training areas uh, throughout the state um, and really see a movement towards, um, you know, increasing in servers, increasing in, in uh, cloud capacity, uh, increase in uh, digital usage of information. Uh, we used to support smaller circuits around, you know, 50 megabytes. Now we're talking uh, 10 gig. And for those that don't know, that's a that's a huge jump uh, in usage. And that we only see that growing forward. Uh, so what that does for NBC is that that makes us upgrade our network. And to upgrade that network, we need technicians. We need people that have the skill sets and the the uh, knowledge of how the equipment works and how to install it and turn it up, turn up new customers. Uh, so it's definitely some opportunities for growth over the next five to 10 years. And even beyond that, uh, we 10 years ago, we were saying that there were certain things we would never, we'd be able to use till the end of time. We can never use that much information, that much data. And here we are today is upgrading that uh, in place. So uh, it's going to continue to grow and continue to be a, uh, a high impact field and a field that needs some, some great employees. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Well, we're getting pretty close to uh, the time where we need to wrap up this part. So let me just ask uh, the, the final question here. What, what career advice would you give or offer to anyone, and especially these students, who might be interested in a career in IT? Maybe we get one or two of you to, to share your thoughts. Uh, let's get to Inez. So I would encourage you to be engaged. I would encourage you to have a voice. Um, you know, if you're competing against a job, you know, what makes you stand out? Um, you know, continuous education, your education will not end with your first job, whether it's continuing to get more certifications or going back to school. Um, network, um, I, can, I can tell you from experience that network really will help you with your career success. Um, but I just repeat again, just show initiative, be engaged, be that voice and make yourself known. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, Inez. Maybe one other career advice, uh, Kristen. I don't know if it's really career advice or more of just kind of, you know, life advice and words of encouragement, but something that always stuck with me that someone told me was there's nothing to it but to do it. Um, and I, I live by that. <laughs> um, and, you know, so, I mean, just don't, don't doubt yourself, don't doubt yourself, don't sell yourself short. Um, there's tons of opportunity around you just here in our area. Um, you know, you, you can do anything you put your mind to, you just have to put in the work. So if you set goals and you put in the work, you know, you will be successful. Um, you know, nobody starts climbing a ladder at the top. You know, you got to start somewhere and, start, and take the steps to put in the work to get there. So it's just, it's really up to you. You just got to show that initiative and that want and have that drive and we'll be successful. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Really appreciate uh, all of your expressions and thoughts uh, on the questions we had prepared. And now we've got some questions that are coming in from the students that we'd like to ask to the panel. Um, 
One of the first ones that I saw pop up was from Tilda. She asked, when was Windows first made? Um, and I, I can feel that. So that was because I was around <laughs> when, when that was first made. I actually started with DOS when there was no Windows. But around 1985, 1986 is when Microsoft released its very first version of Windows. And then later, they came out with Windows for work groups. And then there was Windows 95. Uh, there's Vista. We won't ever talk about that again. Uh, <laughs> Windows ME, <laughs> that was another swing and a miss, you know, but then Windows 7 and, and now, you know, Windows 10 and we had a few others in between. But yeah, probably long before most of you were born, uh, Windows was out there. Now, someone asked, uh, you know, what are some of the programming languages that might be used in the field? Someone asked specifically about JavaScript, but uh, what are some of the recommended programming languages if a student would like to get involved in programming? Any thoughts on that from our panel? Uh, Inez. So Anthony, that's a tricky one because it keeps changing. So I think what's gonna be important is that you learn how to code. Um, HTML, I, I would say is, is important. Um, Java is still out there, VB is kind of going away. But, you know, the trend typically is every couple of years, there's usually something else coming out. So I would try not to focus on one specific language. I think it's just going to be more important just to learn how to code in general. Yeah. Yeah. Learn, learn the concepts of, of coding. Uh, understand that you know, things like Python is a popular language. Um, C++, C Sharp, they're all uh, still, you know, valuable uh, skills to learn. What I will say is if you are interested in programming, then math will be a much more important skill set uh, for you because the type of programming that is really true programming, it's all about algorithms. Um, so learn, learn your math if you're interested in programming. Now, let's see. Someone asked about salary ranges. What, what kind of salaries could people expect if they're going to get into the IT field? And we're not asking you to tell us your personal salaries, but from your experience, <laughs> what do you know is a, is a good range? Uh, Kelly. Well, I can, I can at least speak to entry-level salaries of people that leave our program, for example. And they usually, I, I don't think I've seen anyone start less than $15 an hour. I'll just give it an hourly rate and up as high as, um, I think, 24 an hour. These were entry-level people with no experience. So, and that's in our, in Southern Virginia. Yeah, I, and, and I, I think the sky's the limit as far as the upper end. Yeah, and that's true. And I can tell you just entry level position at the Microsoft Data Center starts at about $20 an hour. Uh, and, and just to give you a ballpark idea is if you make $25 an hour, that's about $50,000 a year. So uh, that's helped you match hourly rate to yearly salary. Um, but Kelly's right, it, it can go, the sky's the limit uh, from there. Any other thoughts on, on salary? Uh, Kristen. Also, another thing to consider is you talked about earlier the benefits. So even though some jobs may not have the best, the highest starting um, for an entry level position, highest starting um, hourly rate, the, the benefits can, um, you'll learn as you get older, far, can sometimes far outweigh your, your paycheck. They come in, um, they're very nice to have. Yeah, yeah very nice. Thank you. And Inez. Yeah, and I would also caution students to be very careful about um, cost of living. So Southern Virginia has a very, very low cost of living. So your housing allowance is low, gas is low, you know, all those utility expenses are low. When you start comparing yourself to Northern Virginia where the salaries may be higher, you really need to take into concept, you know, what, what else am I paying for? You know, rent up there could be as high as three or three, three or four thousand dollars a month, where rent down here could be uh, you know, five five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. So, um, I think as well as benefits, you need to take all that in consideration as well. Yeah, and and that's a good point because uh, sometimes you, you could see salaries posted in areas like Northern Virginia and Washington D.C. and others, and it and it looks like you know it, that that's an incredible salary, and then you get up there and you find that a one bedroom apartment costs you three thousand dollars a month plus utilities, and you realize you know that high salary doesn't go as far as you think. Whereas is down here in this area, uh, the decent salary can take you a whole lot farther. So that's a very, very good point. Um, a few have been asking about uh, college again and, and what's really required. Um, so 
first of all, maybe we can just have have someone summarize, you know, what kind of uh, certificate or degree do you really need from college to get started in IT? Uh, Inez. So I would say an entry level, a two year associate's degree and um, information systems or, you know, some kind of IT track. Certifications that we look at would be CompTIA, as Kelly mentioned, A plus certification, um, CCNA, you know, for networking. Um, beyond that, if you're looking at more of a, you know, leadership or management position or mid level, I think that's where your four year degree may be helpful. Um, but I also want to stress experience. You know, if, if I'm presented with a resume that has a two year degree, but they have no experience, they're probably going to be put at the back of the line. Um, the experience could be volunteer experience. It could be, you know, helping out with, you know, your church or something, helping out with the computer, you know, systems there. Um, so experience is extremely important. But I think you could definitely find something with a two year associate's degree in IT with a little bit experience. And then you just need to continue to build on top of that, build your certifications, build your portfolio. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Inez. And actually, we do have another question for you from Joshua White. He wants to know, what are some of the IT positions available in Danville? So we currently don't have any openings right now, but we have four, uh, well, probably six different tracks of career growth. So you can go on security track, you can go a networking track, you can go desktop support track. Uh, client services that gets uh, a little bit more into the interpersonal skills, the relationship marketing. Um, then we've got application development, which would be building applications and then application support. Um, but we have about 23 positions. Um, fortunately, we've had very low turnover, but we do have quite a few people that are getting near about retirement. So we'll probably be looking for a few people in a few years. Excellent. Thank you. Well, that's about all the time that we have for our questions. Um, they're, they're, we could talk about this all day, obviously, because all of us love uh, IT, but we really appreciate uh, all of our panelists, mm -hmm. Inez, Kristen, Kelly, Chase, uh, and all of you for uh, participating. Um, let me just say this as, as we wrap up and close. You know, the, the projections for the information technology field is that it is one of the fastest growing industries. You know, over the next 10 years, there's gonna be more jobs created in IT than in any other industry. And what you've heard from this panel is that you don't need a four year degree to be successful. You don't necessarily need to be a math whiz. It's not all about computer programming to be successful. And IT, as you can see, it's not just for guys. You know, it's not a bunch of computer geeks. Uh, the majority of our panel are very successful women in the field. So information technology is a great field for girls and females who are looking for a satisfying career with great pay, wonderful benefits. You now, the fact that all of you have joined this panel says you have an interest in technology. So we encourage you continue to grow that interest. Talk to people who work with technology, read about it. Take advantage of the education that's available to you right here in Southern Virginia and who knows, in a few years, it might be you on a panel like this, encouraging other young people to pursue their passion for technology like you did. Now let's give our attention back over to our career choice advisor, Julie Brown. All right, thank you, Anthony, so much. And I want to uh, reiterate what he said, thanking all of our panels for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. For our student attendees, we hope you are energized and excited to research opportunities in information technology. And the Career Choice website is a great place to start. Um, that's, we posted that earlier in the chat. Um, for those attendees that participated in a majority of the discussion, so you were logged in for you know, a little over 23 minutes, your name is gonna get entered into a $50 Visa gift card drawing. If you're participating as a whole class, don't worry. We're gonna be reaching out to your teacher for your names. The gift card winner will be contacted through their school. You have another opportunity to earn or win a $50 Visa gift card by completing the Career Choice Scavenger Hunt, which is uh, found on the Career Choice website right now. 
and completing the career choice survey. And that will be coming out March 22nd. Each student that completes both of those activities, the scavenger hunt and the survey, will be entered into a drawing for their school. So good luck, and we hope you continue to take advantage of opportunities to imagine your potential, connect with employers, and explore career possibilities. Thank you so much.